Hello everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and I figured I would start this episode by showing you another Easter egg sequence. So if you try to enter the Imperial Palace when you're visiting Vector, you will get attacked by the Guardian. And this was mentioned in Zen when we visited by an old man. And the Guardian is essentially invincible. You cannot harm it and you can't do anything to it. So unless you run away, it will take out all of your party members with uh, very powerful attacks. So it's best to just dodge it and don't worry about the Imperial Castle for now. So with that, let's get on with the rest of the game. So where we left off in my last episode was we were standing on the precipice of a showdown with a couple of espers. And so we have Ifrit there on the left and Shiva on the right. And both of them supposedly have been extracted of all of their magical essence by Kefka. Now we're going to find out exactly how extracted they are in this battle. So you have to be very careful about what attacks you use. Because throughout this battle, Ifrit and Shivo will kind of tag team in and out. So if you have a bunch of attacks targeted on Ifrit and it switches over to Shiva, then she'll get hit with them. And obviously if they're elementally based, like Ice for example against Ifrit, those attacks will end up healing Shiva as she comes into the battle here. You also want to make sure that Celeste has the Reflect Ring or Wall Ring on because when she uses her magic against them, they do an auto counter attack of their element. So that keeps Celeste from getting hit for around 150 to 200 damage. The last thing to kind of keep in mind in this fight is that Sabin's Aura Bolt attack does not do any damage. So you do want to use Pummel because it is a piercing attack. And with Edgar uses Drill because that also pierces through defense. So just keep plugging away, and eventually the two of them will fall, so to speak. As we'll see here in a second, what happens. Hopefully this will be the last hit. Oh, no. Come on. There we go. So they sense a kindred spirit, aka Ramu and decide, well, if you're good enough to have Ramu, well, you're good enough to have us too. And we get our first new Magisite for quite a while in the game. We haven't gotten any Sans Sozo. Hmm, the capsules. Must be extraction capsules. So apparently these are all siblings. The ultimate sacrifice. Giving us their power to aid us in our quest. Thank you, you two. Now both of these Magisites are pretty handy to have. You're going to start now getting different Magisite pieces that allow you to specialize in particular areas of magic. So Ifrit, as you might expect, specializes in fire magic. So he gives you a little bit faster acquisition of fire and also fire too. And Shiva, of course, gives you ice. And since Edgar's pretty close to a level up, we're gonna keep Kate Sith on him so that he gets a magic boost. Now, before advancing, one thing to take note of is whether or not a lot of your party members are at level five. Oh, wait, we have a flan here first. So many of you are probably aware of the flan enemy from various Final Fantasies. Um, in future Final Fantasies, past Final Fantasies, they tend to be weak to a particular element and resist most other elements. Well, in this version, ah, as you see, they sort of split into copies of themselves. And so you end up having to fight up to three of them at one time, and I'm not exactly sure of what the conditions are for that happening, as you see. Now we should have to fight three, yep. But if you just keep plugging away at them, eventually they will all fall like that. And Edgar did get his level, so let's move Kate Sith over to, I think Celeste was next.
So anyway, level five. So in this hallway, you can encounter an enemy that used to be called the Trapper. I'm not sure what he's called in this version. But basically, they are some robotic enemies that drop down from the ceiling. Not these generals, of course. And these Trapper enemies, ooh, a Mithril Shield. Uh, getting digressing here. These Trapper enemies can use a lot of different special magic attacks. And actually those generals, their shields kind of look like folding chairs. That was kind of weird. Anyway, they can use level 5 Doom or Death. And uh, we got through that room pretty easily without encountering them. So this is all moot at this point. But anyway, to let you know, they can use level 5 Death. So that will kill any of your party members that are at level 5 or level divisible by 5. And I think they can also use level 4 Flare or level 3 flare, one of the two, and level 3 or 4 confuse. So you have to be careful again what levels your party members are at and basically just try to kill them as quickly as possible. And so now we've moved on from the Magitech factory to the research facility and you'll notice that we have some pods out here which I'm assuming were the capsules that Ifrit was talking about. Uh, let's go with Shiva. And there's actually an item hidden up here too. Off the screen, a secret item. So let's kill this bird off and I'll show you where it is. Quick Aura Bolt with two earrings. Not much can stand up to Sabin unless they resist, which some enemies, as you've seen in this episode, do. But head south here and over to the left, and you get a Stone Blade. So that sword, if you equip it and you attack, it has a percentage chance of putting an enemy into stone status, which instantly kills them. And up here we have a boss. So this is number 24. Kind of an odd looking character. Looks like he's got a couple of blades off the back of his hands and maybe a whip there or I don't know, a pull cord. Maybe he's got a rocket pack or something on his back. But ooh, I got the rune blade. He has a rare steel, or actually I think it's just a regular steel called the rune blade, which is an okay weapon. And uh, ouch, there it is, overflow, oh no. Confuses, and when you hit Sabin with it, he takes out one of your party members, so let's bring him back. But number 24 is interesting because he's one of the first enemies that actually can change his elemental weakness and defense. So he starts off without really any defense, but as you use certain spells against him throughout the battle, he will change his barrier like that and resist certain elements, and also changes weakness to a particular element. And uh, you can use the scan magic spell to figure out what element he's weak to, but since I do have Sabin and Edgar, you can use piercing attacks to just take him out. Although, yeah, aura cannon's not gonna work, so we'll have to use pummel. Or, I think it's called raging fist. I'm. I'm still not used to these new translations of his blitzes. So keep plugging away. He doesn't really have any super damaging attacks. The most dangerous again is his overflow attack which confuses. But unless he hits someone like Sabin with it, you don't really have to worry about it. And in fact, I would guess within the next couple hits he'll probably go down like that goodbye number 24 which reminds me of uh, the Venture Brothers henchman 24 and we get another ice brand so you're gonna want to de-equip Celeste because again she is going to be leaving our party for a while now, it's possible the game might give you all of this without having to do it, but I like to just make sure we have all of it. 
So advance in the next room and, ooh, we have some espers in these pods. Looks like a unicorn. Not sure what that is, a specter of some sort. That looks like Carbuncle. So hit this switch. And apparently that allows you to communicate with them and because Ifrit sacrificed himself, the rest of them do too. And hey, here's Sid. There's a familiar name to all the Final Fantasies. Well, most of them, after two. And Sid has a pretty awesome mustache. And I've never been sure what his outfit is. I've always kind of perceived it as a raincoat of some sort, pulled up over his head, like a slicker. But they kind of made it in his little portrait here look more like a mage's robe. But the way his sprite looks, it kind of looks like it has a sheen to it, or a shine, like it's made of plastic. And sweet, we get six more Esper Magicites. So we are really stocked now with our abilities. Professor Sid. What? You're a spy? Such a thing has never happened in a Final Fantasy game. Oh no, it's Kafka. He originally called Sid an idiot for his extraction process, not working so well. Uh-oh, he's saying Celeste was a spy too. Yes, yeah, Locke. Trust the maniac and not the woman that you love. Because I'm sure Kefka wouldn't do something like lie to try to confuse you. Not really in his character. <laughs> oh, geez. Whoa! Okay. How are you going to protect us, Celeste? They just took us all out. You're going to cast a spell? Ah, warp. Or teleport. I uh, don't recall her having that spell, but uh, whatever. I guess it's kind of like Talay in Final Fantasy IV. Maybe extreme emotion brought back a different spells that she can now use. But yes, what are we to make of that? Is Celeste a traitor? What do you think, viewers? What's this? Uh-oh. So, uh, get us out of here, then. Where do we need to go? It's this little... conveyor belt thing. Or elevator. We have a nice awkward ride down, staring at each other. So, Stid starts to have some reservations about what he's done to the espers and uh, apparently he's going to try to convince the empire to give up his quest for power good luck with that all right in the next episode we're gonna continue on and try to get out of this factory so as always thanks for watching and i will see you all next time